One of the pleasant things in life is finding or discovering something totally unexpected. And that is what happened to me. One day at work, a guy told me, hey, did you know, right up the road from work, there's an archery range. It's public and you can go to it. So off to the computer I went, found the location, and off I went. In order to find this place, what you got to do is you got to take this county highway here, 61. And what you're going to look for is the West Feliciana Parkway. Now, when you hear the word parkway, you get visions of massive highways, the Eisenhower Interstate System, road exchange signs, exits and entrances, and all that good stuff. But not this one. What you're going to get, and all you're going to get, is that sign right there. There's your entrance sign, that's your exit sign. So what does this parkway look like? Well, it looks like this. A simple two-lane country road. But they even warn you, there's trucks entering the highway. The only bad part is, pretty much nothing on this highway. So when you look for it, look for the sign. Um, it's on the north side, between two others, which I'll show you just in a second and head on down to West Feliciana Parkway. There's no break areas, no rest areas. So if you gotta go to the bathroom, make sure you go to the bathroom before you get on it. The one thing you're gonna find is the sign's really small and you, you'll blow right past it. So there it is, it's next to the James Bow Bryant Animal Shelter and the LSU Agricultural Center Extension. So look for that sign there. Remember West Feliciana Parkway. But when you go down there, and you head down that road, what awaits you is totally unexpected. What makes this park all the more unexpected is the fact that it's located in a parish, otherwise known as a county, of just 6,000 people. They built this park for 6,000 people. As you enter the sprawling 300 plus acre property, you begin to sense the sheer size of this place with two massive open fields which are there for you to enjoy. You can fly your drone, radio controlled airplane, or even a kite. New to the park is a mini water park for the kids. This was paid for with a grant and is now a popular feature that draws kids there every night. There's also a concert stage where they host concerts throughout the year and other events they can use the stage with. Being in the country, this park has a rodeo arena, and that arena hosts rodeos on most Friday nights. The arena in the rodeo area has restrooms, covered seating areas, concession stands, and even a covered eating area off to the side. On the other side of the arena is the 4-H Livestock Barn. This area is used by 4-H for their various shows and events. The park features a one mile paved hiking trail with markers at different distances so you know how far you've walked. This paved walking trail loops around the property's pond which is stocked each year and is open to fishing and those who want to use the radio controlled boats and even submarines. One of the misconceptions about the United States is that we're all capitalist. We don't no social services, no quality of life things. We don't have all these beautiful public amenities that other countries have. You know, and the truth, like anything else, is somewhere in between. And this place is the perfect example of that. This is public land. It is maintained by the county of West Feliciana. It was built by them, but it was built by them with sponsorships. And when you come in, you'll see all the businesses that sponsored it. And this is the tennis court, Investar Pavilion. They spent some money here. And it's a beautiful example of the private and public sectors coming together to benefit everybody. And that money paid for a tennis complex with six courts and a covered pavilion. Here, they hold tournaments for local, state, and regional players. Located off to the side of the tennis area was what appears to be miniature tennis courts. When in fact, there are really four. 
something I never heard of before and I had to look it up is pickleball. It's played on a tennis court. This is a mixture of table tennis, tennis, badminton. They use wooden paddles with a like a wiffle ball and a two to four people. <laughs> you know, never heard of it, but they got a club here. Go figure. Not to be outdone, the park also has areas for both types of football. The American version and the world's version. Otherwise known as soccer. And being in southern Louisiana, it gets hot. Right now our average temps in the mid 90s. So what do they do? Covered basketball courts. But what if the ball goes around? See in the far back on those columns there? Curtains to pull them over to stop your balls from getting away. This is pretty cool. You know what? Playing uh, basketball in the shade is a lot better than playing it out in the blazing sun. With those high temperatures, the park has put out water fountains in various locations. And this one, located by the basketball court, even has a filtered water feature so you can fill up your water bottles. The park also features a playground for the kids and it even includes a free book booth. Over here in the playground area, I found this, an octagon. So it's either for little kids MMA, teaching them how to be gladiators. Maybe it's miniature bullfighting. Or maybe it's a place to put your kids so they can't escape. I don't know, but out here, there's, there's an octagon. Next to the playground is a well-equipped and designed skateboard park. They also have these batting cages, which you can use during the week. It's, uh, they got the buy the tickets over there and you come in. I don't know if you need your own bat and ball, which I will find out here in a minute. But they have the different ones. You got a 40, 50, 60, and 70 mile per hour, right? Not bad for fast pit baseball and softball. So you can have the different trajectories in case you don't know what baseball is. Slow pitch, lobs in, baseball pretty much straight in. But I like this. Anyone under 88 years of age or under 88 inches tall must be accompanied by adult supervision and hardball cages. Well, I'm 59, sorry, 58. 30 years uh, well okay and I'm only 69 inches so I guess I can't do it unless I go get my mommy wait my mom's not even 88 my grandmother dead guess I can never use these hmm. oh well the disappointment of neither my mother or I being old enough to use the batting cages was soon gone why because once I walked up and took a look at the crown jewel of the park. That crown jewel is two baseball and softball quads. From an awesome entrance building with a full concession stand and air-conditioned restrooms to the well-maintained playing fields that they have, you know, I've seen minor league stadiums that would pale in comparison to this. And at the center of each quad is a covered pavilion. So at the center of each of these baseball quads, it's another pavilion. And you can't see, but they got fans running here to keep the air circulation going. And on this end, and this end, and that end, which you can see behind me, practice area for the players. They got a batting cage, they got a pitching area. Man, I never see nothing like one. All right, I grew up in a poor part of town, but we had nothing like this. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the camera, I'll bring it to 360 just so you can get it. This, I have to say, I am highly impressed by. We all know down south they take their sports way more serious than we do up here. <laughs> Let me tell you, didn't know it was this serious. Championship League rings for the kids. Look at those things. I'll put a close-up of it right here. That, that's incredible. Located off the beaten path of the park is six miles of dual-purpose trails for hiking 
and biking. All right, everybody, here we are finally. I know, Greg, why are you showing all this other stuff? Well, it's because this place is pretty amazing. Now, with all that, you think the archery range would be something fantastic? Well, it's not. It's just a good basic archery range. Here's your rules, right? Uh, no broadheads allowed for any reason. Uh, arch equipment only, no air rifles. Don't shoot while people are downrange. At first, I thought it said don't shoot people who are downrange. Um, pole arrows, same time, no matter distance you're shooting. Parents required to supervise children, throw your trash away. That's a big one. Please respect, use respect for everyone using the range. It's here for all of us to use, right? Now, you'll also see it says archery range and 3D trail. I'll show you the trail in a second, a little bit going on with that. But that's that. So there's the basic. The range is right behind me, right? And I'll take you to it, show it. We'll do some shooting, take on the 3D trail, wrap it up. All right, everybody, here we are in the range. They have the green butts at 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, and the hay bales are out there at 50. Now, the shooting line is those rocks right up there. But if you're here by yourself, you can stay here in the shade under the trees like I am and shoot from back here. And this adds on another 10 yards to all your targets. So now it's 25, 30, 35, 40, 50, and 60 yards out there to that black bear. It's pretty simple. You know what? And if you come here at the right time like I am, I'm here around lunchtime, it's quiet. There is nobody here. So you can shoot, do whatever you like. Nice open ground, although I will say my arrows burrow. So make sure you bring something if you miss to find that arrow, because man, those babies were hard to find. I like being in the shade, because it gets, you know what? Everybody tells oh, it's so hot. Yeah, it's hot, but I've been in worse. Um, but no matter what, you know, I'm not a kid anymore. Heat takes its toll on me. But I just stay hydrated, work smart, I'm fine. All right, cold shot of the day, no practice. Uh, that's the 25 yard bag right there, so try to hit the center. <laughs> you know what? It's great. What I like about having a range all to yourself is you come out here and just work for them. Let's see what's going on. Why is this happening? Work on what you are doing. You know, so many of us just shoot. And we don't think about what we're doing. We, we just naturally assume what we're doing is right and not having any effect on what's going on. You know? And that's when I made my big changes is when I, I started asking myself, you know, why did that go there? What happened? And I got that from Joel Turner. You know, Joel Turner, the big thing is once you shoot, you always know, remember what you're thinking. What were you thinking of during that shot process? A little off. And if you do that, you're going to find certain answers coming through. Certain things that are repeated. And that's what you can learn to work on and try to eliminate. <laughs> two to the left, two to the right. All right, last one. See if I can get this one in there. Then I'll take you down and show you the three-day trail, and I'll show you a couple things you need to know. Ooh, even farther. Didn't hold it all on that one. Here we are on the 3D trail. Now, they only got one or two targets out. They pulled them in because they want to do work on the trail. But if you ever go out in the woods of Louisiana, and if you're from Louisiana, I know you know this, but you're gonna run into these bad boys right there. They're called long silk spiders. They're harmless, they do sting. Um, they said it's like a bee sting. But they're always across the trails here. So when you walk, if you see different areas, you'll understand it. 
Oh look, and here's one feeding. That's my thumb. Showing you size relation. So, they're out here. They're everywhere. And if you don't behave right, or you don't pay attention, you'll be wearing them. Then you have to practice your Kung Fu. All right? So, trick I learned is they're always off to the side if it's open. But if you see down there, there's that branch sticking down out. That's where they're at. So if there's any branches sticking out in the trail, <laughs> look before you walk. So how do you stop from running into them? Well, you learn to walk like this. <laughs> this will stop a lot of them. <laughs> like right here, you can see the branch. So you know there's probably something in there. That's when you put your bow out. <laughs> 